and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Josie and Edmund from the Canadian Blood Services. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DBTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Josie and Edmund, the Director of the Data and Analytics Center of Excellence at the Canadian Blood Services. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Josie and hello and welcome. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm so happy to be here to share this space with you. Oh, well, we're, I'm so excited you uh, joined and, and, and are here. I'm excited to hear about what you do do. So you're the Associate Director of the Data and Analytics Center of Excellence. I mean, what a great org name, first of all, <laughs> at the Canadian Blood Services. So tell me, what type of business is the Canadian Blood Services? I mean, that sounds so, such a, like a strange name. What What is it that you do? Yeah, so it's essentially, um, we're Canada's biological lifeline. And what that means is that we are the connection between donors, patients, and healthcare professionals and medical researchers. And we're nationally responsible to secure um, life essentials for transfusion, transplantation, to ensure that it's reliable, it's accessible, and sustainable. And everything that we do is to help save lives and restore health. And so each Canadian patient is, um, we want to ensure that they have reliable access to safe and high quality blood, plasma, stem cells, and organs and tissue. So we really do have a very important role in um, the Canadian healthcare system. Yes, indeed. That's fascinating. Um, so I'm just betting you have a lot of data that goes along with that. Mm -hmm. Very important data, right? Um, so, so tell me, what do you do as the Associate Director of the Data Analytics Center of Excellence? By the way, I think every data center should be named the Center of Excellence. Yeah, yeah. It's a very, it's very, it's a, it's a very new space for a lot of organizations and for mm -hmm. CBS as well. And mm -hmm. so I was hired as the first leader for this very unique role and a first time for the organization to serve as a centralized hub, to build a team that serves this core centralized hub for the organization to promote best practices, um, standardization and innovation in data management, analytics and reporting. So our team is essentially an, um, here to establish community of practice to build up data literacy and analytical skills and understand how we can use data to drive better decision making. Fascinating. So, and and um, I assume, you know, I mean, that's your quality of data is, is even more important because lives are on the line, right? Right, yes. So we take that very seriously. And mm -hmm. so um, data is very, very important to ensure that we have the right amount of data so that we can make the best decisions for um, our organization as well as for the Canadian population. So data is a very crucial and integral asset that um, we want to advance so that we are getting ahead of specific scenarios that we're faced with. And so we are more proactive and we can use the data that we have to optimize on our strategies to help secure our um, healthcare system. I love it. Well, let's talk about how you got into this role. So Josie, and tell me, you know, was this the dream? And like, say you were six years old, like this, was this the dream? Like, I want to grow up and be an associate director of the Data and Analytics Center of Excellence. No, I think um, if I go <laughs> back as far as six years old, I wouldn't even remember what I um, dreamt of, but I can do, t I can tell you how this came to be. And I think this career path found me. <laughs> I did not find it. <laughs> <laughs> and it just naturally aligned. And so after, so my background in um, university is in economics. So I studied mm -hmm. economics in undergrad. And after that, 
I took one year off to go live in Spain. And oh. so my um, Spanish um, literacy at that time wasn't that strong, but I was like, you know what? I'm up for the challenge. I just want to explore a new opportunity, be open to different experiences to see what unfolds. And so I did that for a year. And what, what did you unfold- Yeah, what, what did you do in Spain? So essentially, I was the language and cultural ambassador for um, for Canada. Um, mm-hmm. What that t- title really means is that you go into local schools and have conversations in English. So you could talk about the weather, you could talk about any pop culture, you, whatever it is, you just have conversations with the students so that they can integrate with one different accents and uh, um, from North America and um, be able to kind of understand that um, everyday dialogue within English so I did that and it was fun because all I had to do was talk to teenagers <laughs> and so that was a good experience I did that for and I was able to actually pick up Spanish during that time as well as well as travel a little bit in Europe but it gave my mind a lot of time to really think and think about what I wanted to do and to explore a different side that I haven't tapped into and it really led me to continue. I was like, okay, I'm good at numbers. I'm good at math. Let me continue in economics. So I did a master's in economics. And there was this one class that intersected. And economics is a lot about supply and demand and data and how to use data to kind of inform how we use to allocate scarce resources. So it's a similar concept. But there was this one class that had an intersection between health and economics. And I'm like, okay, this is a very interesting field because I... Um, I'm from a, my family has a background in health. So there are a lot of um, pharmacists and nurses in my and doctors as well in my uh, family lineage. So I thought, okay, I'm not going to be a doctor, but at least I can contribute to this space in a meaningful way by using information to help um, advance or help improve the health outcomes in the healthcare system. So then I went into research after I graduated and I realized that I quickly did not like that. Um, I, I did a lot of data analytics, but a lot of writing, but nothing where I was using data to make an impact. Yes, I was contributing to the space in a meaningful way because we use research a lot to move forward with specific initiatives and strategies, but I wanted to use data in a more powerful way. So then I went into like more um, operational data analytics and that's when I really found my niche. And uh, um, since then, I have been on a career path developing within, uh, so I've been becoming a, um, a trusted expert and advisor within the field of health analytics within the province of Ontario. And so this opportunity fell on my lap uh, to have a national view. And so I, I, I took it right away. Oh, that's amazing. I, I love that journey. Um, and I, somebody was just asking me the other day, you know, is it possible to find mix your passion with data, right? And and find that job that you just love. And I think you just exemplified that. Right, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, so that's why I said it found me because what I did was really open myself up to experiencing new things and not mm-hmm. necessarily close yourself um, into a specific defined box. There's an opportunity to have like an intersectionality between certain things that you like to do and enjoy to do and where Mm -hmm. you could um, also contribute to the social good part as well. So that part in me was another driving force. And so that's why um, I have been having on this career path. Yeah, yeah. So along with uh, the things kind of unfolding in front of you and opportunities, you were also very intentional about what you wanted um your career to look like so that's that's I love that that's a great story what so tell me why did you get into economics in the first place what drove you what interested you there why did you decide to uh major in it I am good at it (laughs) I am good at numbers and uh, I am I love I'm a very analytical person hence why I'm in data analytics and data management I love to solve problems and economics is a series of problems that need to be solved, right? And to find out what are the different contributors to figuring out that problem. And my curiosity and a field just filled with just utilizing your curiosity was just like an amazing um, area for me to kind of excel at. So, and uh, so yeah, it tapped into that side and, and I loved it. And I realized that it's not just economics that I love. I just love solving problems with data and numbers. So whereas it could be an economics photo focus or it could be like a data driven focus. So I know that that's my skill set and it could um, flourish within data analytics as well. 
Do you find yourself in your current job using both uh, like your economics training along with all the data training that you've acquired along the way? Yeah, funny enough. Um, I, in my first week, I realized that this is full circle because where I was on the health service side, we're looking at how do I optimize patient outcomes using the information that I have? How do I make patients healthier, knowing that there are specific factors that could account for that using information and giving that in the hands of decision makers so that they can align resources to make the health system function better. And so being in this new role where it's about actually collecting supply of biological products to serving the needs of the patient, which is demand, I had an aha moment. I'm using data analytics and also tapping into the foundation of my academic training in economics, which is supply and demand, as well as I need to know how to use data and how to structure data, because you don't have that training in economics. You have simplified version, but the training that I had in my career that exposed me to different um, data assets, the way to manipulate data, to code data, the importance of data governance, data standards and policy, and now the intersectionality between supply and demand and what the relationship is and how I integrate those two things. Yes, this is the moment where I have connected the dots. I'm like, you know, that's why I spent six years of my academic training in economics to be in this position today. Well, and I'm interested to know too, I mean, it's a new position. So, you know, as you've, you know, explored data, especially, you know, um, even in your schooling and then um, in the and jobs in between that and, and this, you know, where did you learn? And especially being in a new, brand new role, like, and how did you ramp yourself up and, and uh, dive into that role and shape that role that, that is new? Right. Yeah, that's a very good question. I think coming into having a blank state is can be a good thing <laughs> and it can be a curse at the same time. But yeah. for me, it seemed like I had a blank hand pass and I could and have an opportunity to make it what I um, I can see the best opportunity to see for it. So that was a good thing. But what helped me to really ramp up on it is um, asking a lot of questions, being curious right? Mm -hmm. And curiosity allows not only new information for yourself, but prompting the other person to think in a different way. Or yeah. to, it's like, oh, I have never asked myself that question. So you're contributing value while learning at the same time. And so value add while you're also getting information to see how you can structure your team. So I was the first person that was hired for the leader of the Center of Excellence. So I had an opportunity to do that environmental scan qualitatively and quantitatively. And then, so, okay, this is the resources that we'll need based on what I've heard so far. It's amazing. Oh, I love that. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. So, so tell me, what's been your biggest lesson so far in your career? Hey, that's a big one. What's the biggest lesson? Um, so I learned, I learned, especially with, um, I've been on a continuous growth path, right? And I've been growing significantly. And I quickly learned that it's okay to be uncomfortable. It's actually better if you're uncomfortable, because that means that the person you're going to be at the other side will be far greater than who you are today. And which is not an easy feeling to accept at all. That's right. not an easy feeling to accept. So <laughs> even at the stage of my career in the leadership role that I'm in, I always have to come in myself. You feel uncomfortable right now. Don't worry. You'll be a superstar at the end of this comfort zone. And so I think that's the biggest lesson that I have learned is that growth comes with discomfort and you're exercising a muscle that you have not used before that you will know you'll be proficient at if you continue along that path. And, uh, and that I think you, you learn that as a, as a kid as well, because they're very resilient. They're like, okay, like, you know, I took my daughter skating and she was crawling for the first class. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a waste. <laughs> like, we're not we're never going to get there. But the resiliency You're right. is what kids have. And as adults, unfortunately, sometimes you lose that. And going through right. this growth path allows you to expose yourself 
to that and build up that resiliency again. So that's what I've learned the hard way, but the lesson that's valuable. Oh, that's a, that's a great lesson. And, uh, and yeah, you're right. I mean, we, so we try so hard to avoid the uncomfortable things, but that is where we grow for Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. So, um, so now, you know, it's, it's going through your schooling and now in your new role and, and everything in between, you know, what is your definition of data? Especially my new role, I was able to like quantify it metaphorically. Um, so I view data as little puzzle pieces, right? Little mm-hmm. puzzle pieces that we're able to put together and mm-hmm. it will help us tell a, a really wholesome story. So it helps us to really map everything out. And if you have all the puzzle pieces in a box, there are no standards, there's no governance, it's jumbled up all throughout. And so in intent of my role as a leader of the center of excellence is to help us put those puzzle pieces together. And sometimes some organizations are very mature where they have put half of the puzzle together and there's some opportunity to put different puzzle pieces together, maybe buy a whole new puzzle set all together to really put sure. um, yeah. piece that together. But the goal of the COE is to really add some spotlight because sometimes you're puzzling in the dark when it comes down to data analytics. And so the goal of my center of excellence is to add some spotlight so we're piecing the right pieces together so that we can tell the story. So that's how I view data. And I think it's very integral. It's a huge asset um, to all organization, but particularly to my field um, where there's an intersectionality between health and analytics is very, very crucial. Oh my gosh, I, I love that definition. I, 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 and it, it's such a great visualization um, uh, and that's so relatable. I can totally understand all the puzzle pieces in a box shuffled up and yeah. like, how do you fit them together to make something a visualization? <laughs> so uh, that makes a lot of sense. So, you know, um, and having worked with data now, uh, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Yeah, it's definitely increasing um, because as, as, as data becoming a, such an integral asset, not a lot of people actually know how to use it. <laughs> And there's a fine, unique skill set who are willing to really invest their career in learning how to be doing data analysis and data management. And so I think that there's going to be a space because we're collecting so much data and uh, there's going to be a market, growing market for people who know how to analyze and to structure that data and to govern that data. So if you think about um, every app collects data now, there's such a vast amount. So I think there is just the way that our culture is moving, society is moving. We're huge data creators and consumers as well. So I do think that that industry will have adequate space for anyone who is willing to come on board. And I think you, I think you uh, again, sitting in a new job that was created specifically for this, I think that just advocates and supports your argument there. So um, I, I look forward to seeing more of those jobs opening up. Because um, you're right, so many companies still don't know how, what to, or, or haven't put a value on their data yet. Mm-hmm. There are so many different maturity levels. There are certain companies that are very advanced in the space and they're leaders in the space but they're still evolving right like what's the next thing what are we going to do and then there are companies that are very low in the maturity level that's um, looking to to elevate and to expand their data capabilities so there's always room for the very very senior data folks as well as for the very junior data folks that can come along and help other organizations grow oh nice so then what advice would you give to people looking to get into a career in data management? I would say try it, go for it, um, give it a shot, see um, what you like, see how you can um, instill something that you're very, very passionate about into the field of data management. So it doesn't have to be everything you want it to be, but you can find something in there that kind of give you that positive feeling. And so I have done that because um, sometimes it can be very difficult. It can be a very difficult field as well because it, it involves a unique skill set and we can be strong on one and, and weak on the other. 
And so whatever it is, whatever field in data management that you choose, find something that really gives you joy in that field and own it, focus on it. And then the, the, the areas that you're not as strong in, continue to work at it, but you just need that thing to kind of motivate you to get through. That's good advice. Because there are so many different uh, jobs and roles and uh, in the field of data, like you say, um, data governance, uh, analytics are often separated. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and in my my role or my the COE is actually separated but working cohesively together, right? Mm -hmm. So, it's very mm -hmm. important to not only expose yourself to different angles and opportunities. Right. There's no there. You can always try and see what um, really speaks to you. Yeah. Yeah. And every industry has data, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Find a company that drives passion for you. <laughs> right, exactly. There are a lot of individuals that who are graduating. What I've heard from the universities that are interested in doing social good. So if that's your thing, there is a lot of organizations who are working for the public service or um, an organization of charity that um, you could probably find interest in. So, yeah. Oh, well, Josie, and this has been so much fun and so fascinating and, and interesting to get to know you and, and what you're doing is it's, uh, I commend you on your job and role and finding that passion. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing, allow me to share my story in this space. I really enjoy talking to you and um, enjoy this whole podcast and what you're trying to achieve within this area. So again, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Okay, thank you, Shannon. And to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date in the latest podcasts and in the latest in data management education, you go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time and stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.